We have next talk by Dr. Digvijay Singh, but he's unable to come here because uh, he's uh, not well. So he has sent his talk with the voiceover. So we'll just play that. I know Sushma, but there was no place. <laughs> this one. So I want you to be here in front, sir. <laughs> Yes. Again, Sushma, I would like to say Ravi Thomas words <laughs> 1000 times. You have to see 1000 normals to be able to recognize an abnormal. So, 1000 is the yes, key sir. figure. Yes, sir. Are we able to hear? We should. Yes. Okay. Rotation or projection of light or quantitative matter using either the static perimetry, which is the outfit of the octopus, or the dynamic perimetry. for the central 30 degrees field of view. Before coming to the interpretation of the perimetry printout, I will briefly explain to you how to perform a static perimetry. This here is a Humphrey perimeter. The patient needs to be seated comfortably, his chin on the chin rest, his forehead towards the forehead rest. You would have to give a near addition if the patient is in the press biopic age group through a rimless lens. You give him the trigger in his hand which he has to press every time he sees a spot of light, a fixation target, either a central fixation target or a small diamond or a large diamond target can be given based on his visual acuity and the patient is asked to press the trigger every time he spots a light inside the dome. This is what the typical Humphrey perimetry printout looks like. On top you have patient identification parameters as well as the reliability indices and the machine settings. Then you have the threshold parameters, you have the grayscale on top, then you have the probability plots below, you have the pattern standard deviation plots on the right below and on the extreme right you have certain parameters such as the mean deviation, the glaucoma hemifield test as well as the pattern standard deviation values. The top half of the field gives the patient's name, the type of test that has been done, then they give reliability indices as you see on the left fixation losses should be less than 20 percent anything more than that gets marked with a double cross fixation losses occur when the patient responds to a stimulus in his blind spot area false positive errors should be less than 15 percent these are normally occurring when the patient presses the trigger in the absence of a stimulus false negative errors more than 30 percent is unreliable and these happen when the patient does not respond to a previous spot that he has responded to in the past then it mentions the test duration, it mentions the stimulus, it mentions the strategy used as well as a few other parameters as you see on top. The date of the test is very very important and right on top is the eye that has been tested. In the bottom half of the printout you have the total deviation plot which is looking at the values compared to age matched controls. A minus means that this patient has a lesser sensitivity or there is a field defect in that area. Then you have the pattern standard deviation which subtracts all the values from the seventh highest point and takes out a pattern deviation. Below that you have the probability plots which are coded as dark black or gray or a dot. This is the typical print seven in one printout that is seen in an octopus perimeter. Most of these uh, parameters are similar to that seen in the Humphreys visual field. An additional Bebe's curve is seen here. The top half of this printout mentions the patient details, the date as well as the eye being tested. The bottom portion carries the parameters of the test and two specific features you can see here are the catch trials and the questions slash repetitions. These are referring to the fixation losses and false positives similar to what is seen in the Humphreys perimeter. The middle part gives you the comparison plots followed by the probability plots as well as the corrected comparison plots and the corrected probability plots which are similar to our pattern standard division in the Humphreys perimeter. Instead of a gray scale you can have a colored scale here on top which can give you a overview of the defect. You have what is known as the defect curve or the Bebe's curve on the right. This curve is giving an indication of what the field defect looks like. The dark black line is the curve. If it is within the two or three uh, 
lines on top then it is normal if the whole dark line is complete bottom then that is a generalized depression if one part of that is getting tipping below then it's a specific or a localized field defect and we'll come to a few examples later in this presentation let us see a few examples this is what a normal humphrey's printout looks like Here you can see a field defect in the superior field which is there both in the total deviation plot as well as the pattern deviation plot. You can observe on top that all the reliability indices seem to be normal. There is also a foveal threshold on top which is slightly abnormal. Overall there is a reduced mean deviation and a pattern standard deviation indicative of a field defect. This is almost like a superior arcuate defect. Here you can see a central field defect. Again, if you want to read this printout, first look at the reliability indices which appear normal. We know it is the left eye which is tested. We can see that there is a central a depression in the central field in the total deviation plot. And this a part of that persists in the pattern deviation plot, and you can see that there is a connection with the blind spot as well. This is another case where the left eye has been tested and you can see that there is a superior arcuate defect. Here is a printout which is showing a more severe field depression. You can see there is a bi-arcuate defect. A small temporal island of field seems to be uh, present and you can see that there is a severe de depression in the mean deviation. This is a perimetry printout showing a generalized depression of the visual fields. When the visual fields are too depressed, you can see that the machine does not calculate a pattern standard deviation because the generalized deviation itself is so much. This is an octopus printout 7 in 1 showing a normal visual field. This is an octopus printout 7 in 1 showing a generalized field depression with localized field defects. Notice how the Bebe's curve is entirely below the normal lines but also dipping sharply towards one end. This octopus printout is showing a localized defect. See there is no generalized depression of field in this one. This octopus printout was showing a slight field depression in the generalized field there is no localized defect. You can see that the defect curve is just below the defined normative lines. This was done uh, in a press biopic patient without giving him the near addition. This is a different type of printout from the octopus perimeter itself. This is a Humphrey-like printout. You can see a central visual field defect here. But this is just to show that the octopus can also give a printout in this format to make it easy to compare with the Humphreys visual field as well as for people who have more comfort reading the Humphreys printouts. Thank you for your patient listening. So we thank Dr. Digvijay to, send, to be able to send his presentation. I would request... Yes, please. What we are looking at in a visual field is basically the pattern of defects. So when you look for pattern of defects, see glaucoma is very typical. It has a very typical way of showing you the visual fields and the damage also. So what we are looking at is the actual pattern. So as long as all the, your reliability indices are good and things mm -hmm. like that, what you need to do is to look for, see for example, these are just random spots. So are they forming an arcuate? That's what you look. And the baby curve, what it does is it ranks all the test points according to the sensitivity from right to left. So right is the highest, I mean the left is highest, the right is the least. So what happens is they also do the uh, local defect which is this particular area. So when there is a generalized depression of the baby curve, it means that there is a generalized depression. It could be due to cataract, it could be cornea, it could be media opacity. So always look for the pattern. So when you're looking for the pattern, take the statistically validated uh, uh, kind of tables. Now this is common
for both HFA and it is also common for octopus. They just call it in different names. The basic premise is absolutely the same. It's just that some representations may be difficult. And in the newer ones, you also have the actual glaucoma tester, I mean, I mean the um, thing. See, uh, I think this is an older software, so you don't have the actual glaucoma hemifield equivalent in the octopus. So even that is there, then you also get a Brucini staging. So you print out what you have in front of you, whether it is octopus or HFA, all the information is in front of you. So look at these two statistics and then draw your conclusion. If, if you want it to be quick. So look for the pattern and see where these patterns occur. In fact, in one of them, he has even shown one which is uh, kind of paracentral. See, uh, this is not my um, slides, but I can show you. Yeah. So this is absolutely normal. So it can be HFA or anything. So it should actually not matter. Look for the pattern of the defect. As long as it is statistically validated, that is what you're paying for because that's where the normative database is. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr.